lot of energy. I love it. I love it. I love it. Lots of energy chattering. You don't know how long I've waited for this. This is awesome. Having all you guys here, ready to start the school year. All summer long, Mrs. Better and Mrs. Shrilla and I are sitting in the office and it's boring. There's no students around. And so this is exciting that you're all here and I know you're excited to see friends and meet new friends and get started this morning. So welcome, glad that you are all here. Um, as we sit, please, um, if you have, if you're squeezed into a pew, just move to another pew and spread out a little bit. Feel free to do that right now if you would like to do that. Um, I'm glad everyone's here. Um, and hopefully everyone can hear in the back, etc. All right, let's make our beginning in the true tradition of UCHS. We clap with the triune God. Let's make our beginning this morning at the beginning of this school year in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's devotion, and I just turned off the projector. Our theme verse for today, well, our theme for this year, excuse me, is united in Christ with a heart of service. Notice the letters that are underlined. U, united. C, Christ. H, heart, S, service. United in Christ with a heart of service. We're talking a little bit about what that really means to us today, what that means in regards to all aspects of your life. The theme verse that's selected for this year is from Philippians chapter 2. And I know you people in the back can't see it, so I'm going to read it. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort in his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being, this is important, like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, this is, this is the next big point right here. In humility, value others above yourselves. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. So what does that mean? United in Christ. Here's the exciting part. You and I don't have to do anything to be united with Christ. We don't do anything. You see, being united with Christ all comes from Him loving us, from God's love to us. God's love to us is just complete. You can't do, I can't do anything to separate or keep Him from loving us. Nothing. Nothing. You might say, but, you know, I really did some really lousy things. It doesn't matter. He still loves you. You might say, oh, I don't even believe in God. Doesn't matter. He still loves you. You might use his name in vain. Doesn't matter. Still loves you. You might do some of the things that are considered terrible. Doesn't matter. He still loves you. Nothing's going to stop his love to you. And that's what unites us in Christ. So in Romans 8, it says this. Don't believe me? This is what it said. Now think about this. This is all the things that would try to separate you from God. For I am convinced that neither life nor death, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. In Christ Jesus our Lord. God's love for us was so great that God came down and sacrificed himself for you and I. That's his love for us. And that's why we're united in Christ. His love is there. So what do we do now? Okay, God loves us. What does he say for us to do? He gave us two commandments. Real simply. We, he loves us. We in turn love others. It says number one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Got the idea? Everything. Number one. Love God. Second thing, what does he say to do? Love your neighbor as yourself. And therefore, God's love unites us so we in turn can love God and love each other. And we go back to that Philippians passage where it talked about putting others in front of yourself. You know that's not possible in a me-first environment. 
If you walk around, and some of you are being tempted to do that right now, if you are all about me, well, I don't want to do that, and I don't want to do that, and I think I should do that. And if that's the world that you live in, then you don't have the philosophy that we're talking about here. We're talking about the UCHS spirit, the culture that we have here. I already saw it this morning from a freshman. I love it. Somebody opened the door for somebody else and held it for them. A simple common courtesy. Using thank you and please. Having respect for other people's things and property. Uh, being positive. Helping one another. That's the UCHS culture. That's what it means to serve others. You know, that, all those things have to come from your heart. It's not a rule. It's not like if you don't hold the door open, you're going to get in trouble. No. Nah. It comes because you want to do it. It's something you want to do. So when we, when we talk about giving, I'll tell you something going on right now. We have a food drive. This is going to be interesting. This is where we're going to do a lot of little experiments here. We'll see how this works out. We're in the student council's collecting canned goods, bringing cans of goods. Okay? So let's see. Let's see how well we do and respond. I hope you do. You think of all the people that are going to benefit from those canned goods. But what about mass? The number one topic on everybody's thoughts right now is what about mass? So there are three mass rules in society right now. The first one is no mass. If you would take yourself back in time about two years ago. Two years ago, the only people that wore masks were doctors in an operating room. People wearing masks, oh yeah, over in China, sometimes people wore a mask because the bird flew or whatever, but people don't wear masks. That was no mask. That's the first rule. The second rule that we did all last year was everybody wears a mask all the time. That's the mask rule. Everybody required to do it. The third rule is the one we're in right now. It's saying it's an optional. You have the option, depending on the circumstances, of wearing a mask or not wearing a mask. And so it goes back, I'll give you an example. Oh, Tuesday we had a great time. Uh, all the new students that were here, we went bowling, we climbed on the bus, everybody put mask on. Why? Because it was in the benefit of everybody there. So how can we serve others, our devotion, in regards to masks? I think there's three ways that I'm gonna implore you to think about it right now, okay? Three ways. First one, if somebody's wearing a mask, respect that. You don't know their circumstances. You don't know their medical history. You don't know what's going on in their lives. You don't know what's happening, but they feel the need to wear a mask and we're gonna respect that. Just like we're gonna respect the fact that all of you are different with unique talents and abilities. Every single one of you. And so if somebody wears a mask, all right, great. We're gonna respect that. In fact, we're gonna do more than respect that. The second thing I'm going to ask you to do, because we're thinking of others, is there's going to be times, just like riding the bus, when a teacher's going to say, I think in the interest of everybody, we're going to need to wear masks. Or in this situation, we need to wear a mask. You need to respect that. You need to respect that and realize that that teacher is saying that or doing that because they feel that's in the best interest of everybody. Because again, we're not thinking about me, I want, we're thinking about all of us, united. The third one, probably even more challenging. You might walk into a situation where you're seated next to somebody wearing a mask because that person has some very concerns and feels they need to wear a mask. Here's, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna push you a little bit. We're just gonna see how this works. You might just want to take out your mask and put it on. What does that show that person? That shows that person you care about them, that you respect them, that you value them. All the things that we talk about at UCHS. So three ways. One, respect people if they wear a mask or don't wear a mask. Respect the situation in a classroom or a setting whereby we say, gosh guys, let's all mask up. And look for situations whereby somebody might be wearing a mask and to make that person feel better, you're going to put a mask on. So what does that mean? You need to have a mask with you all the time. We're not in the no mask rule. We're in the optional mask rule. 
Now, how can we do this? You say, well, what's going on, Mr. U? I said, UCHS, as we've said many times, is not like any other high school. It is not like any other high school. And we don't want it to be like every other high school. We want it to be a school where people are respected and honored and upheld. And so that's where we're at. So let's start today. I have a board meeting next week, and I would really like to report on how well that went. Teachers are going to let me know on Monday how well it's going. Today, but especially tomorrow and Monday, I want to know how well we're doing. How's it going? Are people buying into it? Or are they pushing it aside and just thinking of themselves? I'm convinced that you all are going to rise to the occasion. And I'll say that because at UCHS, we have seen students rise to the occasion every time. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, as we encounter the day's world, help us to understand that we are united in you and in your love. Lord, help us in turn to have a heart of service, a heart of caring and reaching out for others, of doing what we can to help them. And that includes mass, Lord. Gosh, this is, this is a tough, tough thing, tough thing for all of us to handle. But help us to do that in love and concern for others and for the wonderful bodies you've created for all of us. We thank and praise you. In Christ's name, amen. Are you? We're going to start with our teachers. You know, um, at UCHS, we do a three-on-three. -three. So when we get the teacher's name, teachers, we're not going to hide there. We're going to stand up and walk out here, okay? Um, we're going to give them a three-on-three. -three. And I've got my cheat sheets. So I don't leave anybody out who's... Uh, uh, we're getting to be more and more. Okay, Mr. Atkin is not here this morning. Mr. Atkin is our art teacher. Uh, Mrs. Ashley Bartok. Come on out here, Ms. Bartok. Mr. Bartok is teaching Spanish 3. Um, and let's give her a 3 on 3. 1, 2, 3. <laughs> Excellent. And Mrs. Better. We're going to write down there. Mrs. Better is our office manager, does all the finances, does runs the ambassadors program. Let's give her a three on three. One, two, three. We have Mr. Chase. Mr. Chase teaching life sciences, including a brand new class this year of biology, advanced biology, biodiversity. Let's give him a three on three. One, two, three. Also, the next one, uh, Mrs. Davis. Math, pre-calculus, uh, AP calculus. Some of you are going to have her for algebra one. And uh, she also does the National Honor Society. Give her a three on three. One, two, three. Uh, Mr. Gilzo, he's in the back walking up. Mr. Gilzo is our nine, religion nine, religion ten. Let's give him a three on three. One, two, three. Miss Hamlin. Miss Hamlin is uh, English uh, modern lit as well as your academic advisor. Let's give her a three on three. One, two, three. We have uh, Mr. Kiever is next. Mr. Kiever teaching U.S. history, AP U.S. and world history. Uh, thankfully, I have Mr. Kiever here. Give him a three on three. One, two, three. We also have Ms. Hauser. Lou Hauser is teaching health class. Uh, she's not here this morning. Uh, people that are taking PE in health will get a chance to meet her tomorrow during health class PE time. We'll talk about that. Mr. Lee teaching chemistry and physics. Let's give him a three on three. One, two, three. Followed by, <coughs> excuse me, my voice is good. Mrs. Link, teaching English as well as the head of the student council. Uh, let's give her a three on three. One, two, three. <laughs> Mrs. Pepe, teaching uh, math, including a new math class called uh, Advanced Algebra Math 4. Uh, let's give her a three on three. One, two, three. <laughs> we have Mrs. Reed. She is joining us to teach Spanish. She was the first Spanish teacher at UCHS. Uh, she's coming here to uh, teach Spanish 1 and Spanish 2. Give her a 3 on 3. 1, 2, 3. <laughs> also, Mrs. Shirilla is uh, the person at the front desk. I think she went back across the street, didn't she? Mrs. Shirilla, she's the person in the front desk. She's the one that answers the phone most of the time. But she can. Let's do it real loud because we're recording this. So let's make sure she hears a 3 on 3 from Mrs. Shirilla. 1, 2, 3. <laughs> Also, uh, Mr. Sigmund. Mr. Sigmund is joining us from Bunker Hill High School, uh, uh, 
esteemed, exceptional math teacher. He's going to be teaching Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 this year. Give him a three on three. One, two, three. <laughs> Miss Sinclair. And Mrs. Sinclair is joining our staff. She is our biology teacher. She's also a nurse. Um, so let's give her a big welcome for three on three. One, two, three. <laughs> Mr. Taylor is not here this morning. He had a family situation. Um, although he's going to see this recording, so let's give him a three on three. One, two, three. <laughs> Mr. Willard. Mr. Willard, esteemed Mr. Willard, who has taught maybe some of your parents. Uh, but he was the principal here before me. I took his spot, and uh, we're very thankful to have Mr. Willard. He's going to be teaching uh, Religion 11, 12, Speech, 